guest lecture by Sri G. Vijay Raghavan. And he is a visionary who changed the landscape of IT sector in Kerala. He is the founder CEO of Technopark Trivandrum and a former member of Kerala State Planning Board. He is also the founder director of National Institute of Speech and Hearing, NISH. He is currently the honorary director of Center for Autism and Other Disabilities, Rehabilitation, Research and Education, CADA. He has also made his contribution to literature through his book, and he is a huge advocate of occupational therapy and also the patron of this conference, OTCon 2024. Sir, we welcome you for your talk. Good afternoon, uh, everyone, and thank you very much for inviting me to this All India Conference of Occupational Therapists. Uh, first of all, let me start by saying that uh, I'm grateful to uh, Joseph Sunny and the organizers for inviting me. I should also say I am probably one of the few non-rehab people around. I am not a certified professional in this area, but have been involved with rehab for the last uh, maybe 25, 30 years. No. Can I get, can I get my slide? Present. Anyway, sorry, uh, sorry about that. Uh, what I'm going to talk about is uh, how do occupational therapists become a high impact force within the rehab area? And the reason for choosing this as the topic was because in the last six years that I have been involved with the Autism Center and a few years before that, when we were trying to get occupational therapy as a course with the Kerala Health University. The kind of resistance that was there, and you'll be surprised that till about four years ago, Kerala did not have a single university or a single college which had a course in occupational therapy. And when I looked at it, and when I look at what I've done the last few years, you find that, well, how is it an, o is an OT different from other rehab professionals? And that's something which I've learned from my thing there. You find that the OT brings in a holistic approach in designing rehabilitation goals. Uh, the psychosocial aspects, adaptations to the environment, the use of assistive technology. Also, the OT's work brings them into the individual's everyday life, uh, integration to community. And you find that the focus is on continuous uh, you want to use the word recovery or continuous development happening there. And this is something which, unfortunately, even 
when you talk to OTs, especially those who come out of colleges now, they don't really focus on or they don't even project on. Also, there's been a role of, you know, the blurring role between occupational therapists and physiotherapists. And uh, this was something when we decided to set up the uh, Center for Autism in Trivandrum. Um, not that I have anything against physiotherapists. I've benefited from physiotherapies in terms of when I've had a problem with my shoulder or with my arm. But very clearly, we took a decision that until such time that we grew to a certain level, and until such time that I was able to, to have the dominance of occupational therapists within my organization, we said we would not recruit a physiotherapist. There was a lot of resistance to that, but that was something which we did. And that's one of the reasons why when and they mentioned that I've been a motor for occupational, that's one of the reasons that we did. And we said, there's a very clear differentiation between what an occupational therapist can do and what a physiotherapist can do. And it is there that dominance cannot be brought about by anyone other than the occupational therapists themselves. And it is therefore necessary for occupational therapists to show that they actually dominate the rehab sector. I have a brief, you know, in fact, my for my presentation, I'm going to actually, I'm going to use a small video that I had and uh, see how I... Kader, yeah. Center for Autism and Other Disabilities, Rehabilitation, Research and Education, is a not-for-profit organization in Trivandrum offering a full-day intervention program in a school setting to children with autism in the age group of two and a half to 18 years and a skills building and employability training program for young adults with autism. CADER is manned by an interdisciplinary team of occupational therapists, speech language pathologists, psychologists, special educators, arts and music teachers, and an Ayurveda physician. I have been an occupational therapist with CADER for past two years. CADA follows an interdisciplinary approach and OTs work in collaboration with psychologists, speech therapists, and special educators. I work mainly with the early intervention program and my role as an OT is to uh, help our children in my care uh, to be independent and live their best life. We help children to connect to the world through meaningful, purposeful activities and play. The important areas an OT focuses on in the early intervention program are self-regulation, toilet training, mealtime routine, environmental adaptations, gross motor and fine motor skills. When a family approaches us, the first thing we do is a comprehensive evaluation, which includes sensory profile, reflex integration, gross motor and fine motor functions, cognitive skills and area. We develop an individualized education plan for each child based on the assessment. We are active members of the team in the development and implementation of strategic and operational plans for the children in the classrooms. We provide suggestions to special educators on writing skills, seating adaptations and postural corrections. We design sensory diet for the children that consists of proprioceptive, tactile, and vestibular activities considering the needs of the child. We start the day with a sensory circuit, which includes alerting, organizing, and calming activities in order to meet the sensory needs and to stay regulated throughout the day. Since I work closely with speech therapists and psychologists, I get to observe and learn various assessments, oral placement therapy, how to incorporate augmentative and alternative communication strategies and different behavioral interventions. I have been an occupational therapist with CADA last couple of years and I work with juniors, preteen and teen groups and also young adults in the skill developing and employability training program. In the adolescent and young adult population, occupational therapists primarily focused on enhancing independence in daily activities. 
emphasizing areas such as self-care and organizational skills and in instrumental ADL activities such as household activities, shopping and money management. We have several seating modifications at CADA for students. Instead of chairs, we use bean bags for those uncomfortable with sitting in a traditional seating. For those with a lower sitting tolerance, wobble cushions are provided. Students who get easily distracted by outside noises benefit from wearing earmuffs. A so um, I've just cut that maybe a minute or two more, but uh, one of the things which we've tried to do here is that no assessment at the center happens without the presence of an occupational therapist. That means any evaluation needs to have the occupational therapist, the speech therapist, and the psychologist together to do that. Number two, we are very clear that the OT actually in many cases becomes a mentor to that group. So the OT, OT works as a mentor among other therapists. They work with the special educators in terms of handwriting skills. So clearly you are defining what the OT does. And one of the things which we found that even speech therapists, psychologists, and the special educators look up to the OT for techniques that they can use to actually improve the impact of what they do with the children. This is another important thing that we have. Um, uh, you know, we, we talk about psychologists, uh, we work with them, they do a very great job there. The other one which we, let me just, yeah. Now, when you look at, uh, in India, I think it is necessary for us to define the scope of occupational therapy and the areas of speciality that are there. One of the big problems that we find is there's a scarcity of OTs, like you had a scarcity of speech language pathologists about 20, 25 years ago. But one of, one, of the, my, one of my concerns, and I see there are a lot of young occupational therapists here, and I'm just going to ask a quest, couple of questions, so please raise your hands. How many of you have a master's in occupational therapy? Can you please raise your hands? How many have a PhD in that area? Good. So one of the things which I need to say is that if you're above 45, 50, don't bother. You can continue to the rest of the career with what you have. If you're above 35 or 40, you have to do your master's. If you don't do your master's, in about five to 10 years, you will not find yourself in a position to grow. Because unlike in the past, you'll find the number of occupational therapists coming up are higher. And if you don't do your master's program, you will see that you will get left behind because like happened with engineering colleges about 35 or 40 years ago, where those who did not have a master's could teach, 40, 40, sorry, 45 years ago they could teach. But subsequently you needed to get a master's. If you didn't get your master's, you did not grow within the organization. And for those younger than 30, you need to get a doctorate. I know in the country, we do not have a clinical doctorate kind of a program for occupational therapy. It is essential that such a program is developed. And that can only be done if, again, like I said earlier, the occupational therapists need to ask for it from the universities and the educational institutions which run these programs. So any, any, one of the big advantages you have is many of you work in, in what I would call private universities or deemed universities. You can push within that university to start a clinical doctoral program, which will actually help in terms of uh, improving the kind of position that occupational therapists have. The other one which I find is you need to look at multiple certification programs which come up. I know there are some that are happening, not enough. Probably occupational therapists are so occupied with the kind of work that they are doing that they don't find time for certification programs that's necessary to have that. You also need to have occupational therapist development programs like they do with medical development programs or continuous education programs 
that I don't know of too much of that happening, but one needs to do. And I think an organization like the All India Association of Occupational Therapists should probably take a lead in conducting these. So it's necessary that that becomes, of course, when, with the new bills coming out, you will find some changes, but it is necessary for that to happen. Otherwise, you will find that you end up repeating what you have learned in the university or seen in the university. And at some point of time, people will say, occupational therapists are obsolete. That can't happen. So it's essential that that is something which you should definitely work on. In fact, one of how I would conclude is that if you're willing to put in work, the reward will be magnificent because the children will change in front of your eyes. There is no other place where you would see or no other profession where you can see that change happening and the impact of what can happen. If you find that a child, while when, when the child was feeding, okay, could not, uh, you know, eat himself well, within a month that change happens and you would see that the impact is very high. And I should give you, I'll just put with one very interesting example which happened. We had a, a, a child, 13 years old, mother was in a very senior position and she uh, she actually came and and then, you know, we did not have a vacancy, but about a month or two after they came in, we gave the child a seat. The child was studying there and in another month, month and a half, while talking to the mother, I asked her, how are things? And she said, tremendous influence, and a student, tremendous improvement. And I said, you can't have tremendous improvement in the autism area in two months' time. She said, no, sir, tremendous improvement. I said, there is no way you can get tremendous. And tell me what you're talking about. And she said, it's the first time in the last 13 years that I am able to go out with my son without him having to wear diapers. Okay, The occupational therapist who I had with me was able to toilet train that 13-year-old boy in two to three weeks. No physiotherapist can do that. No special educator can do that. A mother could do it if she had the right kind of training and inputs. So what you don't realize is the kind of impact that you can make in the lives of individuals who are on the spectrum, individuals who have a disability of some sort. And it is necessary for occupational therapists for you to actually take on that head on and say, this is what we do. And we need to realize that we are a high impact group within the rehab area and others need to recognize for that. I will just conclude by saying, I know there are a lot of young people here. We have a, a, a film-led festival coming out where we are actually looking at, uh, it's, it's actually an international film festival on autism. And if you have the creative strength within you to get a short film, one minute to five minutes on anything in the area of autism, where you talk about the impact that you have had on an individual with autism, one to five minutes to sing. If that film gets selected as the best film, there's a one lakh cash price. And the reason why we are doing this is we want people to start becoming more and more about aware about autism and what can be done in that area. Thank you very much. I have tried to stick within the 15 minutes that I had. And I would uh, once again thank to the Sunny and all the organizers for having invited what I would call a non-rehab professional to this session. Thank you very much.